Thank you. All right, it is now 6.30. We're gonna call the commission meeting to order. Our mayor is not going to be here tonight. I will be proceeding in his absence. Was he actually scheduled to do the invocation? Okay, so um, our invocation is going to be done by Janini Monzen. Okay. Commissioner Vila Vasquez? Present. Commissioner Burbank? No. Commissioner Colwell? Here. Commissioner Jody Lee? Here. Commissioner McCool? Here. Vice Mayor Bradford? Here. And Mayor Vila? Absent. Okay, and then we will have Trinity Christian Academy to do our anthem. We're gonna first stand everybody. Please remove your lids for our invocation and then we'll do the national anthem. that you bless this meeting father that you release wisdom lord our elected officials and we just bless the plans lord that will be submitted today in jesus name amen Okay, we need a approval of the minutes. So move. Second. Who said the first? Okay, we have a first by Commissioner Bill of Vasquez, second by Commissioner Dana McCool. Hello. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No, pass the 6 0. We're going to go presentations awards. I'm going to suggest we all go down to the floor if everybody's good with that. We're going to do medical, emergency medical services week, national police week. When do you guys want to do this? No, that's I medical. Can't. You know police. I can't read. You want everybody together? You want to, are you in a rush? No. I got our medical services and we got the law enforcement. So. I want to get too close to this guy because I'll be in the back of the ambulance. 
<laughs> I know, I don't, I don't like riding in that either. I don't blame it. Go ahead, do it. So we have a proclamation. Actually, this is really nice, guys. I don't know who did this, this is great. It says that whereas our emergency medical services are a vital public service, and whereas the members of emergency medical service teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas Access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the surgical and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas emergency medical services has grown to fill a gap of providing important out of hospital care, including preventive medicine, follow-up care, and access to telemedicine. And whereas the emergency medical service system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedic, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, police officers, educators, administrators, pre-hospital nurses, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, trained members of the public, and other honor other out-of-hospital medical care providers, and whereas, that's $5, and whereas the members of emergency medical service teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills, and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical service providers by designating emergency medical services week. Now, therefore, we, the Mayor and Commission of the City of Deltona, Florida, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 21st through the 27th, 2023, as Emergency Medical Services Week. With the 2023 EMS theme, where emergency care begins, and to remind the community that every day our emergency medical providers are faced with many new challenges in their lives and yet still rise above them all and continue to respond, support, and care for the needs of our communities. Executed this 22nd day of May, 2023, uh, your Mayor Santiago Avila Jr. and the rest of the commission. I wanna thank you guys all for your continued support. You are always out there putting your lives on the line and we cannot thank you enough. Anybody else wanna say anything? Thank you. You wanna open it? It looks very pretty. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> they didn't tell me I need to wear my glasses today. Okay, we're gonna get a photo, another photo? Yeah, <laughs> I'm afraid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You get a hand. Thank you. We do appreciate all y'all do. Y'all amazing. Mr. DNA, good to see you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Are they doing lunch anywhere? They gave us your credit cards. Go where. <laughs> Damn, that's perfect. I should let you. Oh, this, this is long. Oh my goodness, that's long. <laughs> Look at this one. I know. There's no errors. Okay. You don't have any glasses? I can't do it off. Too late. It's dollar store. It's on rich. I took this. Okay. Next proclamation. That is nice. Yeah, right? I know. That's like the nicest proclamation we've had. The City of Deltona Proclamation. Whereas there are approximately 900,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including the dedicated members of the Volusia County Sheriff's Office. And whereas National Police Week is a time for all Americans to pause and reflect on the incredible sacrifices these heroes make for us every day. And whereas some 60,000 assaults against law enforcement officers are reported each year, resulting in approximately 16,000 injuries. And whereas since the first recorded death in, in 1791, more than 22,000 law enforcement officers in the United States made the ultimate sacrifice and have been killed in the line of duty, including five members of the Volusia County Sheriff's Office since, since 1895. Sheriff Jefferson Kurtz, 
Deputy William Kremer, Deputy Charles Kurtz, Chief Deputy William Edwards, Deputy Steven Saboda, and K-9 Forest. And whereas the names of these dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial, which was dedicated in 1991 in Washington, D.C. And whereas 224 officers, 224 officers' names were added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C. for the 2022 calendar year, 63 of those 224 were officers shot and killed by somebody, while 51 died in crashes. And whereas the service and sacrifice of all officers killed in the line of duty is honored during the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund's 35th Annual Candlelight Vigil on the evening of May 13, 2023. And whereas May 15 is designated as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of all fallen officers and their families, and U.S. flags are flown at half-staff. And whereas members of the Volusia County Sheriff's Office presently provide essential public safety services to the residents, business owners, and visitors of the city of Deltona. Now, therefore, we, the mayor and com city commission of Deltona, Florida, do hereby proclaim the week of May 14th through May 20th, 23, as National Police Week in the city of Deltona and ask the entire community to join us in publicly saluting the services of law enforcement officers in our community and in communities across the nation by taking the time to thank the fine members of the Sheriff's Office for their service to our community, executed this 22nd day of May 2023. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. You gonna get in the mic? No, nah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> nope, we're good. We're good. Thank you. Oh. You got it, Al? We're going to get you a wide lens there. <laughs> yeah. Cell phone camera. Thank you guys again. Thank, Thank you, you, Moritz. Thank you, Sheriff. Have fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not a We're just going to give them one second to clear it out. Did we lose Commissioner Jody Lee? And Mr. Kama? Okay, well, we're going to go over our ordinances and public hearings. We have item A, public hearing, rehearing ordinance number 04-2023, requesting to amend the Deltona Village BPUD overall development, plan master development, increase in the number of multifamily unit allocation for the BPUD from 414 units to 652 units, Amendment to the development agreement approved by ordinance number 21-009 and rezone an additional 26.57 acres of land to be included within the Deltona Village BPUD. Joseph Ruiz is our planning develop service manager. Uh, good evening, City Commission, uh, members of the public. Joe Ruiz, uh, planning development services director. Um, 
uh, present before you ordinance number 04-2023, a rehearing um, for the ordinance as read by our vice mayor. Um, I have just learned, uh, commissioners, that the applicant is requesting a continuance to the next available city commission meeting. Um, therefore, um, I will leave that for you all before going on and presenting. Commissioners, does anybody object to this being sent over to the next commission meeting? Um, I would like to hear from uh, what our options are from legal, please, regarding this request. What we're legally entitled to and encumbered with, please tell me that. Um, well, basically, uh, they, resp they requested a continuance. Um, it's the first continuance I'm aware of that they requested, so typically, you know, a continuance is granted. And I mean, I don't see any, I'm not aware of a reason to force the hearing and not honor the continuance from a legal standpoint. Is there anything that the commission needs to be aware of uh, that has changed regarding the continuance, the reason for the continuance? We had some additional information given us to us this morning that we'd like time to analyze. Will that commit? Will that additional information be presented to the commission at the rehearing? I don't know. I haven't had time to analyze it. So we respectfully request a continuance. Just to clarify, Commissioner, any discussions that staff uh, will have with the applicant, um, if anything alters the application, then that will come before you all. Okay. Can we please get a census to move this to the next regular scheduled commission meeting? As it appears, they were given information this morning that they need time to review. Does anybody object to this moving forward to the next meeting? I just want to make sure that the information provided is true and accurate information that it is being continued because there was information tendered this morning and I want a way to be able to um, verify that. If that is the reason being given for the continuance, I want to understand that that is a fair and accurate truth. So I'd like to know how that to be quantified this, as we continue. And I want to know when we were notified. We had a meeting this morning. We discussed some additional information. We haven't had a chance to have our consultants review it. We were asked on Friday if we would consider a continuance. So we, at this point, are requesting a continuance so we can review the information and determine the validity of the information. We, we've been asked for continuances many times, and I've never, I, I, I never had a problem. problem. I understand. I'm just trying to clarify for the record, really, that's all I'm trying to do. Commissioner Burbank, I'm good. do you agree continuance? Continuance away. Commissioner Villavasquez? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Sure. Commissioner Jody Lee? Yes. Commissioner Caldwell? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner, continuance granted. Okay. Do we do that? You need to make have a motion and continue it to a time certain. The Thank next you. Meeting. May I get a motion, please? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Villa Vasquez. Ms. Ms. Commissioner Villa Vasquez, they would like to have a time certain, I believe, the next meeting. Are you asking for this to be moved to June 5th? Yes. I think the 5th is not a meeting, a meeting date, is it? That is the next regular scheduled meeting, I believe, is June 5th, right? For next scheduled meeting, yeah. June 29th was a workshop. Um, the 5th is the next commission meeting. You are moving, okay, so what's the next regular scheduled meeting? June 19th? Okay, okay, you gotta have time to advertise, no problem. June 19th. Okay, so we have a motion to give a continuance until June 19th, the next regular me meeting. Are you good with that? Yes. Great. May we please take a vote? 
We have one speaker who would like to speak. Do you still want to speak on this topic? Douglas McDonald. It won't be, part, if he speaks, it's not part of the record. Yeah. So he may want to wait and speak. Uh, let's continue. Mr. Mr. McDonald, this, this hearing's actually being moved to the 19th. If you do speak tonight, it will not be a part of the regular record, or you can wait. You can speak now, but I'm saying, or you can wait till the 19th. Oh, wait. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. The vote? Yeah, it shows up. Yes. Okay. Motion passes six to zero. B, Mr. Ruiz, you're here again. <laughs> uh, public hearing ordinance number 05-2023 amendment to the official zoning map to rezone approximately 1.76 acres of land from business plan unit development, BPUD, to retail commercial C1 at first reading. Joseph Ruiz, our plan develop service and room director. Um, good evening, City Commission, Vice Mayor, and members of the public. Joe Ruiz, Planning Development Services Director. Um, give me one second here while I look for the PowerPoint. Are you going to do this cross-eye? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just looking for my PowerPoint here. Right, I don't see it on the uh, desktop here, but I will move forward um, as far as in uh, verbal presentation. Um, as mentioned uh, by the uh, Vice Mayor, Ordinance Number 05-2023, an official uh, zoning map amendment to rezone uh, approximately 1.76 acres of land from business planning and development to retail commercial C1. Um, this is a quasi-judicial hearing, um, so um, I will ask Marsha if you can go ahead and just swear in. Um, Will everyone who wishes to speak in this matter that was given notice of standing, please stand and raise your right hand. Is there anybody who received a notice of standing? If not, then anybody else is still allowed to speak. You just aren't speaking with standing, so. Maybe you could just swear me in, Marsha. I'll swear to you. I always forget to know you. It's okay. You swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth to help you die. I do. Thank you. Thank you. And then, Madam Vice Mayor, if you will ask your board if anybody had, had any contacts. Yes, uh, ma'am. That qualify. Yes, ma'am. At this time, I'd like to know if any commissioner, I would like to go down the line, starting with Mr. Commissioner Burbank. Has anybody had any ex parte communications? No, Vice Mayor. Commissioner Villa Vasquez? None, ma'am. Commissioner Caldwell? None. Commissioner Jody Lee? None. Commissioner Dana McCool? None. Thank you. And I have none either. All right. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I do I do apologize, so just please bear with me here. Um, so this is an application, as mentioned, a request uh, to rezone 1.76 acres of land uh, from business plan unit development to uh, retail commercial C1. Then uh, this is also the first hearing. Uh, the, applic the applicant, um, Glenn Storch, uh, his firm has applied for this application. Um, and so the property is located at 2965 Holland Boulevard. Um, this property was originally uh, part of a BPUD, which which was approved back in 2001. Um, the BPUD uh, was partially built out. Um, that was via Ordinance uh, 06 2001. Um, and so at the time, uh, the only thing that was built out was the storeway uh, storage facility. Um, no other um, Developments came about that BPUD uh, from that time, uh, so it still carries the original BPUD um, zoning designation. The future land use on the property is commercial, uh, therefore the C1 request does, does meet the consistency factors of the commercial um, request to zone it back to C1. Um, the intent of this application is to, uh, to develop a 6,000 square foot, approximately 6,000 square 
square foot uh, quality restaurant and is a uh, remnant piece from the original Catalina Point RPUD uh, rezoning. Uh, so when the applicant went ahead and did that rezone for Catalina Point, it did incorporate the traffic for this specific project um, and therefore um, as that development goes forward and the, the the city anticipates a tri party portion of fair share agreement in regards to the, the traffic impacts. There will be a um, tri party agreement for um, that project, including this parcel here for the, for the restaurant. Uh, all in all, staff did uh, look at the matters of consideration for an official zoning map application uh, change, and staff did find consistency. Um, all the, uh, this, this property back since 2001 was anticipated with uses such as um, a restaurant. The BPUD allowed for a restaurant, and so will the C1 um, application uh, request um, allow for as well. Essentially, uh, there was, uh, there have been rezonings that have broken up this original BPUD and so therefore um, in, in talking with the applicant it was best uh, found that if we kind of just take it back to a straight zoning um, take it out from within that original BPUD since it wouldn't it wouldn't meet the original master development plan uh, that has been abandoned um, therefore um, we are where we are today on this on April 19th the tw uh, 2023 the planning and zoning board heard the rezoning request uh, for this property and voted unanimously to recommend uh, city commission Commission approval of the rezoning. Therefore, at this time, uh, staff does also recommend the City Commission approve ordinance number 05-2023, amending the zoning map uh, for 1.76 acres of land from business planning development to retail commercial located at 2965 Holland Boulevard. Any questions? I mentioned, does anybody have any questions? I have no speakers on the board. Just making sure. Okay. No, there seems to have, oh, Commissioner Villa Vasquez. Do you want to hear from the applicant first? Oh, I can just go ahead and uh, Okay, so i just like to um, hereby move to approve the ordinance number 05-2023, amending the official zoning map to rezone 1.76 acres of land from business plan unit development BPUD to Retail Commercial District C-1 at the first reading and schedule the second and final reading for June 19, 2023. The city manager has the authority to make the corrections of scriveners of errors and the like. I will that. So we have a motion by Commissioner Villavasquez and a second by Commissioner Burbank. Uh, first, I'd like to allow a presentation from the applicant. Oh, Thank you very much. You were doing so uh, for the record, my name is Glenn Storch. I represent the applicant in this case, and, and it's, first of all, very nice to see everybody tonight. Uh, the, this is just following up on a promise we made, as you recall. When we made, when we did the hearing, uh, the zoning on the Catalina Point uh, build to rent project, the cottages and the townhouses and the, and the rural community uh, on this site, we made a promise to you we would come back and finish up on this commercial site. And so that's exactly what we're doing at this point. The um, zoning is, is obvious. The, you had an existing uh, commercial designation for your comp plan. You had an existing commercial PUD. It, we even looked at the idea of just leaving it as it is, but there were so many things in the PUD that was built for a bigger project that it wouldn't work. And so in this case, we just did this as, as a simple uh, commercial designation. It's consistent with the, the, the comp plan. It, it had to be changed because of the, the terms of the PUD. Uh, and this will allow, hopefully, for that restaurant or, or whatever. If you recall, one of the things we did also, and you're going to see a, uh, you'll also have a site plan in this case. If you recall, the uh, rest of this project, the rest of Catalina Point, will also be absorbing the storm water for this site. So it makes it an, a better, uh, easier to build site for hopefully attracting a restaurant or some other uh, commercial use that would be beneficial to the citizens of Daytona Beach. I mean, of Deltona. Sorry. <laughs> I'm used to appearing in, uh, in, Deltona, in Daytona Beach a lot. <laughs> so, um, by the way, I got to tell you that the staff did a great job of this. I've seen their PowerPoint. It's very good. <laughs> so I've got a copy of it. Uh, I'm here for any questions, but to be honest with you, this is a, about as simple of a rezoning as you can possibly get. So uh, just let me know if there's any questions. 
seems there's no questions, that Mr. Was easy. George. <laughs> okay, now we will go to uh, presentations from individuals with standings. Vice Mayor, there are no no people signed up with standing. Any public participation? No. This time we can call for a vote. Madam Mayor, oh, you if want to I read the ordinance, ordinance, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Please, yes, thank please you. do. No problem. Uh, ordinance number 04-2023, an ordinance of the city of Deltona, Florida, providing for an amendment to the De Deltona Village Business Plan Unit Development, BPUD, overall development plan, master development plan, increasing the number of multifamily unit allocations for the BPUD from 414 units to 652. That's the wrong one. Oh my goodness, sorry. I had the other one pulled. Oh, five, sorry, two, I'll start again, okay, if I may. <laughs> I was trying to look at that going, what? I, I don't know, I thought this isn't right. Ordinance number 05-2023, an ordinance of the city of Deltona, Florida, amending the official zoning map to rezone a plus or minus 1.76 acre portion of land located at 2965 Howland Boulevard from business plan unit development BPU due to city of Deltona Regional Commercial District C1 providing for conflicts, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Thank you very much. Was that right, Glenn? Was that the right one? Thank you. Okay, we are going to go down and do a roll. You do need to specify your vote, yes or no, and why you're voting yes or no. Commissioner Burbank. I will vote yes because it finishes the project on license. Thank you. Commissioner Villavasquez. I vote yes. Meets all the requirements. Commissioner McCool. But yes, it meets all requirements in our comp plan. Commissioner Jody Lee. Yes, we've already approved this in a previous thing. He's just changing a little bit for the restaurant, so it's already something that's been done and it meets all the requirements. Commissioner Caldwell. Uh, yes, it meets all the requirements. And Bradford, yes, meets all the requirements. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you very much. Next, we have public hearing ordinance number 062023, amending the comprehensive plan of the city of Deltona, Deltona, amending the capital improvements element by providing for the replacement of the capital improvement project sheets at first hearing, Joseph Ruiz, planning and development services interim director. Hi there again, Joe Ruiz, planning and development services director. Um, before you, uh, as read into the record, Ordinance 06-2023, amending the comprehensive plan. So essentially this is an update to our five-year um, capital improvements plan um, that we um, do transmit to the uh, Department of Economic Opportunity. Uh, in essence, a requirement uh, per chapter uh, 163 of the Florida statutes. Um, everything that is within this report um, is from what came out of the budget for the 22 20, uh, 23 year, essentially what we did, what staff did in coordination with all the departments and parties involved. Uh, we took a look at the uh, levels of service based on our, our population, our projected population numbers for the next, for the next five, uh, five years. And so that is what's uh, essentially in the report, um, which finds that um, we, we are, you know, we are meeting our level of services. So at this time to amend that as well as keep in compliance with chapter 163 of the Florida statute, um, which essentially also allows us to make other amendments to our comprehensive plan. I make a recommendation that the City Commission um, vote to approve our first hearing ordinance number 06-2023. Great, thank you so much, Commissioner McCall. Thank you very much. I wanted to speak on this matter. Uh, there is something that I'm actually interested in, level of service utilization charts for the Volusia County School Board. I'd like to point out that while this is presented on page four of six, and it shows the level of service, that if you take this 101% that we are already at at school capacity, if you wanna add the 106 teacher shortages that we have within these schools, it brings that up quite a bit. So you're not getting true capacity here, and I want to let our residents know 
know that. And I want to tell you something. I had a very eye-opening experience this weekend as I devoted my weekend to digging into some of the projections, some numbers that we have been made to believe regarding development in our city, and it's abysmal. The numbers when we talk about the development of our city, what it's going to really truly cost in capital, how much we have given up for developers because of the beautiful contracts that they have written and ordinances they have gotten passed through the city commission is shameful and what the taxpayers is going to end up paying and I would venture to say that it is in the millions of dollars since 2010. That's just my stupid guess. After reading over a thousand pages, do you hear me? A thousand pages this weekend regarding how these things are written. So I want you to wake up. I want you to pay attention. I want you to understand the correlation between one development project and another as it goes on in your city. I want you to understand how they're presented to you at your city, how they're piecemeal fed to you at your city, and understand a bigger correlation as it goes to developing the rest of Deltona. And I hope that we are wide open. If you look at this level of service utilization chart, and I know that we must pass it, I know what the Volusia County Board of Education and School District says, but I'm going to ask you this right now, is 101% capacity. I was taught in this very same school system that 100% is 100%. You don't have any more. But yet you would be believed that that's what we have, and we don't. A hundred and six teacher shortages in these schools in our area, and I'm asking you if that's okay. If it's not, I'm asking you to go to your school district and go to your county and tell them to rewrite the interlocal plan so that you can make sure you're getting the money. And I just want you to pay very close attention to what we do with our capital improvement plan, why we're having to fill up holes in our levels of service due to an unequivocal, unequitable match that we have. And dig down deep and question what goes on in your city. As your commissioner, I'm asking you to do that. So with that being said, I, that is enough on this matter, but please pay attention. Thank you. Commissioner. Anybody else? Commissioner. Commissioner Bill Vasquez. Comments. I would like to uh, hereby move to adopt orders number 06-2023, approving the 2022-2023 capital improvement element update by providing for the replacement of the capital improvement project sheets at first reading and schedule a second and final reading for June 19, 2023. The city manager has the authority to make corrections of scrivener's errors and the like. I'll second that. We have a motion by Commissioner Villavasquez and a second by Commissioner Tom Burbank. <coughs> Do we have any public comment? Commissioner. Mr. Chisholm? Just to clarify uh, some of the comments you heard a few minutes ago, is about the, the, the discussion that Commissioner McCool was talking about the documents or documents that occurred way before we got here and really before prior commissions. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I believe she did mention from 2010. So thank you for clarifying that. Okay, Vice Mayor, we have two public comments, Jim Pesha, then Richard Bellick. Jim Pesha, please. Good evening, Jim Pesha. Originally, I was hoping to have this done to public comments, but I was moved over here. Maybe it's the right place for me to be. Uh, my comment is on the comp plan in its to totality. You know, I've been attending the last couple of meetings now, and we had a development come up there. You guys voted down for an increase in uh, residency, and you did it based on good, solid reasons. I applaud you for that. But at the very next meeting, the applicant was back over here before you asking for a rehearing. That's their right. But the reasons that you voted that down still exist. The reason they gave for their request was because they complied with all of the terms and conditions of our outdated comp plan. It's old. It needs to be updated. We all know that. In fact, last year you had a six-month building moratorium so that that comp plan can be updated. Unfortunately, it wasn't completed during the time frame that you set. 
it needs to be updated to today's conditions, circumstances. We have issues today, traffic, schools, flooding, accidents that we didn't have 25 years ago. We have to look at today's requirements or else we're gonna have conflicts between what was and what is. I'm here today to ask you guys to put the building moratorium back in place. It needs to be done until the comp plan can be brought up to date. And don't put a time limit on it, I ask. Make it open-ended until it is completed, reviewed, approved, and put into place. That will put pressure on staff and everybody else to get it done in a timely manner. Because the longer if they drag their feet, the longer the building moratorium would stay in place, and nobody really wants that. But the changes need to be made. Thank you. Richard Bellock, please. Uh, to follow up on what Mrs. McCool said, I understand perfectly what you're saying, Dana. I understand, but let's let's uh, let's look at this a little more thoroughly. We got a three hundred thousand dollar a year city manager, and he's talking about chicken eggs, would you? So while all Mr. this is going on, Mr. Billy, can you please talk in reference to this item? Okay, Mrs. Bradford, we have a three hundred thousand dollar a year city attorney, and he's in conversation about chicken eggs. Meanwhile, everything else is bad. You just heard her. You just heard him. Come on, chicken eggs? You're giving three hundred thousand dollars a year for chicken eggs. That's that's really really a circus, really. I mean, come on. Like I said, everyone is up there is a dubious character, and this proves it. Chicken eggs with a failing city. You had floods. You got food lines. Mr. Bellick, I'm going to ask you to please speak directly in reference I'm looking to this at item. you. No, listen, speak No, in not listen. To I'm looking at you. This item, this item. This is not public. All right, all right. So in other words, item. I shouldn't have brought up that he's getting $300,000 a year and he's talking about chicken eggs. I shouldn't if have brought that up. If you cannot speak okay, in I'm reference sorry. to this, then I, thank you. I, I apologize. I humbly apologize. Thank you, sir. Have a great night. You too. <laughs> Vice Mayor, this closes public comment. Thank you. Go ahead, Madam Attorney. Thank you. Um, Madam Vice Mayor, if I could read this ordinance, please. Ordinance 06-2023, an ordinance of the City of Deltona, Florida, amending the comprehensive plan of the City of Deltona by amending the capital improvements element, providing for the replacement of the capital improvement project five-year schedule, finding conformity with state statutes, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Mr. Bellick, please. Thank you. May we please have a vote? We have a first, a motion and a second. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Old business, nothing new business. We have consideration to the request for Devin Williamson, owner investor of Mad Assets LLC for a partial release of lien. Danny Road, our code compliance division, and Suzette Cameron, our assistant city manager. Good evening, Commission. Good evening, residents of City of Deltona. My name is Danny Ron. I'm co compliance manager for the City of Deltona. We're bringing you this consideration request from Devin Williamson, owner investor of MADD Assets LLC, for a partial release of lien. Some background on this, on this case is the property located at 257 Fort Smith Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32738, 1197 Acorn Court, Deltona, Florida, 32725, and 1203 Stillwater Avenue, Deltona, Florida, 32725, were once originally owned by Mr. Brian K. Brum, Brumigan. On May 2021, 20, Mr. Williamson purchased the lot located at 257 Fort Smith Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32738. Mr. Williamson is requesting a partial lien release in order to sell the property with a clear title. He purchased the lot from Mr. 
Brummigan for $8,000 and has an action price for $49,000. Mr. Williamson has two potential purchasers, but neither deals have come due to the, due to the liens on the property. The, lot have, the lots have cross attached liens incurred for the original seller and liens have been recorded since 2014, which were present at the time of the purchase in 2021. Um, as you see some of the numbers from different properties, now the property that he did purchase, 257 Fort Smith, there is no liens, but the liens are on these other properties were owned at the same, um, from the previous owner. Now, from my understanding, there was no lien search done when the, uh, this property was purchased, and that's why we bring this case to you this evening. Mr. Williams here is here this evening, would like to speak. Okay, I have Commissioner John Lee McCool and Commissioner Bill Vasquez. Do you guys want to listen to them speak first? Or do you want to ask your questions now? Okay, we'd like to go ahead and hear from Mr. Wilson. Mm -hmm. Good evening. My name is Devin Williamson, and I am the owner of 257 Fort Smith Boulevard. I purchased it several years ago as an investment. Uh, cleaned up the property, had some trash on it and I've uh, just been holding on to it. And um, like Mr. Ron said, we've got a couple of interested buyers and this is the second time that this issue has come up about some cross attaching liens. Now, I'm not a title person or a, a real estate attorney, but through my research and what we've been through over the last six or seven months with the city of Deltona, um, it's simply cross attaching to a gentleman that used to own the property that I do not know. Um, the property that I own is in full compliance. It's a nice small lot. And uh, these cross-attaching liens have nothing to do with my property. So I'm asking for your blessing, um, as I did from the magistrate last month, to simply release us of this other obligation that has nothing to do with us or our property. Thank you. I have a few individuals that, that are asking questions. I don't know if it's in reference to you or not. I have Commissioner Jody Lee. Yeah, Mr. Ron, do you, do you know when they started putting the liens on the property? Excuse me. Sure. I have, no, I have no date, sir, but we've done this. We've been dealing with this property, and I'm talking about Acorn, which is 1197 Acorn uh, Court for years. And I just want to bring it to your attention. I've even been dealing with this property today which he asked us how to get a contract to go on the property and clean the mess up. As of right now, my estimate for the, for the cleanup, it's around $4,000. I just want to add that you know, on there so you know where what's going so on. So this has been an ongoing thing with the city with this one particular piece of property. Now, that how is long correct. Is, how long has this lien been on the property? The lien been on since 2014, sir. And you bought the property in? 21. So it, 2021. And no title search was done on the lien no, prior it was, to? It was a cash deal, no title search. Um, his wife approached us. We actually paid off a bunch of back taxes that he owed, um, somewhere around four or $5,000. So we've got, you know, fourteen dollars or $15,000 um, in the property, and then several more thousand in cleanup, and obviously taxes, you know, over the last several, two or three years. But, um, Again, just to reiterate, the property in question, the 257 Fort Smith, um, other than being connected to the man's name, nothing is physically wrong with our property, you know? And whatever issues ha that y'all have with this other gentleman across town or whatever property across town, um, I guess it's a state law that simply cross attaches it to his name. If he had 20 properties in the city, right. he would, you know, they would all cross attach. Is, is this the first time you've bought property? No. So you've bought property before and had to do a title search and Most lien of the time, search yeah. and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, and I actually had a girl uh, working for me at the time that claimed she knew what she was doing. Um, she gave me a verbal that everything was good to go and I trusted her word on it. And this kind of, this sat three or four years and now that it's surfaced, it's, it's biting us every time that our, we try to go to the closing tables with our title attorneys. No, Madam Vice Mayor. Commissioner McCool. 
Thank you. What is our total investment in this property, Mr. Ron? What is, tell me, what is it we're trying to recuperate? Because I understand that maybe fines don't, you know what I mean, accumulate at the rate at which we really have an investment to pay back. What does the cities do uh, for that? Okay, the total that's currently on there is $163,862. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's city cost. When I did my numbers, it was about $25,500, ma'am. $25,500. Okay. This was a, a pro we had to abate this property a couple times, if I remember correctly. Yes, ma'am. We did, and the owner of the properties at that time, the reason he was cross-attached is so that we could get paid our money back, no matter what the property, that I mean, that's just the way it is. That is correct. Okay. So 25.5, that covers all of our abatement fees. It covers our magistrate cost. Does that cover our magistrate cost yes, on that? Yes, That's already included. Does that cover our labor on that? Yes. So that 25.5 covers everything that we that the city has in that, right? Yes, ma'am. Was there a recommendation from the city regarding this? My, uh, okay, so today, my, uh, before today, there, I pretty much didn't have a recommendation since I've been actually doing the background on this. Uh, my recommendation is not to release this uh, lien. Not to release it in its entirety? Are you talking to pay the whole 163? Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Were all these properties, all these properties were purchased at the same time, right? I'm not aware of that. But, um, he only purchased that one, the vacant lot, 257 Fort Smith Boulevard. That is tied to that, all that the is, rest of the property. That is correct. Is there any purchasers on any of the other properties? No. No. So this it's, is, He still owns own those other two properties. How many, okay, how many properties totally does the man own that? Right now, two. Two properties. Yes, ma'am. So this is attached to two properties. 163,000 is attached to two properties, correct? Correct. And the other property is not purchased. You only purchased the one property, sir? Yes. Okay. And if I could clarify one thing. We're, you know, after speaking with the magistrate last month, she understands kind of how all this works. And she put in a recommendation here on the hearing of April 20. Six um, to recommend that the city commission grant partial release, not a full release of whatever issue y'all have with these other two properties. I mean, that's your business with this this man. We're just asking for a partial release for our property. So, and I understand that, and, and but the, uh, the fundamental problem that I have with that is that there's no other recourse to get this money, recapture this money back that is owed to us, the city, uh, and I think that part of the, um, I, part of the due diligence, I, and I understand your situation, I'm very sympathetic to your situation, but part of the due diligence is to, pr I, for me, to protect my investment in doing that, looking to see if there's a cross lien or any liens on it. Um, so I think that the, I would be safe to say that the equal uh, portionate share would be 82.5, is that it? $82,500 per property? Mr. Danny, is that correct? Total of 163,000 split between two properties would be 81,500, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, right around there. That's all I have, Madam Vice Mayor. Commissioner Villavasquez. Thank you, Mayor. So this, this uh, property on Fort Smith has been um, on a lien since 2014, Danny? He's talking to, to Dan. <laughs> I'm sorry. Man. That's okay. What was the question? This property on Fort Smith has been uh, had a lien on it since 2014. Am I 214. correct? 214. Uh, the cross attachment lien. But, um, two, there was no violations on 257 Fort Smith's a vacant lot, commercial lot. Um, all the liens were on the other properties, which is the Acorn property and the, the Stillwater property. But because we have this cross attachment between, you know, the, the owner owned all three property, they were all connected. 
in this. So you go, you put them all in this in one bag. So there was no lien on the Fort Smith property. Is that what you're saying? There is no violations or liens on that particular property because the property owner owned those three. They were cross attached to allow the recuperation of the money if somebody if he did sell one of those properties. Okay, but it goes back to 2014. Correct. So how long does the city sit on these liens? For, from 2014 20 to years. now. 20 years. 20 years. 20 years, ma'am. 20 years? Yes. We sit on a lien for 20 years. That's how, under Florida statute, that's how long a lien is good once it's placed. Yeah, we could foreclose on a lien, you know, under certain circumstances, but the life of that lien is 20 years. But we're, we're also under Florida statute cross-attached liens exist. And, you know, so to me, if as I look at this, it's basically an issue between the guy who bought it and didn't do a title search and the individual that sold it to him and didn't advise him of the fact that there were liens on it. You know, because in, in Florida, a lien on one parcel, if you owe 10, it's gonna attach on 10. Or, you know, 20, it'll attach on 20. That was so, gonna be my next question. Yes. So, if, for one wrong, if there's 10 more, they all get attached to each other? If, if, if I own a piece of property, and I believe the individual we have here is a hoarder who has had a lot of issues with moving stuff on and off his property, mm -hmm. and I own seven other pieces. Now, the city's only had to deal with me and what I've done on my property, but once a lien is filed on my property by the city, it attaches to all those other parcels. And that's why you do title searches to determine, you know, it, and our liens were recorded and on the books when this gentleman purchased this property. So if he had done a title search, then he would have seen that those liens were attached and more than likely would have chosen another alternative. And that lien, the, the dollar amount of that lien for that one property falls on the full dollar amount of all for the other all liens? all of them, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, if nobody has any questions, I do have a question for you. 257 Ford Smith Boulevard has no liens. We've had no abatements, correct? No abatements, correct, ma'am. Okay. 1197 Acorn Court, how many abatements and liens do we have on that one? I got a combination of $130,300 and $8,062. One more time on, on the other Deltona property? The other the property is 1203 Stillwater, which we have a $25,000 lien and that's a vacant lot. And I hate to, to say it, but if we recoup anything, we definitely need to recoup back what Deltona properties are. This guy is obviously very sneaky. He conned you. <laughs> Who knows, you know, that's, that's the scary part. And the city does have money that has been incurred. Um, we have no guarantee of getting the abatements back on any of the properties. You know, I mean, I, I feel bad because I understand, you know, what you're going through, but at the same time, we got to be cautious on how we rule up here because it does set a precedent. So, can I add a couple? The of staff others? recommended. Um, I'm sorry. The special magistrate recommended a partial release. Partial meaning that my obligation to this other man's debt would be released so that we can move on with our business and our lives with our buyers, okay? And just to remind you, we've had two cash buyers, <clears throat> excuse me, that live in the city of Deltona that wanted to take possession of the property, clean it up, build, develop, get it back on a tax roll, and everybody wins. With this cross-attaching law, that's never going to happen with me or anybody else. And if I could back up and not buy the property, I would. My only other choice would be to just walk away from my fifteen, twenty thousand dollar investment, threw my hands up, and now I stopped paying taxes on the property just like <clears throat> it had back taxes on it whenever I bought it. So me trying to do a good thing, take a property, you know, pay up the back taxes, take possession of the property, clean it up, make it nice and presentable, 
and then me pay taxes on it for several years and now resell it to somebody that wants to take it and develop it, why should I be punished or financially knocked for that? I had nothing to do with this guy. I don't even know him. And my property is clean and clear and beautiful. Commissioner McCool. Yeah, <clears throat> my issue is collecting the, the money from the gentleman that or, uh, originally owes the money. And the only way is through the sale of his, his assets. I mean, he obviously, he, I, I'm not a legal expert. He probably needs to be addressed in a civil matter as far as that goes. But um, I just want to recuperate. Uh, did, did the magistrate pointedly say to relieve you his recommendation was, or her recommendation was to relieve you of any financial responsibility? Yes, ma'am. It says right here, and it's in on y'all's paperwork, this matter was presented before the special magistrate hearing on April the 26th. Special magistrate recommended that the city commission grant a partial lien release, a release of lien for number 2574 Smith Boulevard only which is our property only. So I understand that, but what that says to me is that there needs to be a partial lien release, not a full relief of monetary responsibility, because the facts are legally is that the pro property was not properly researched at time of pur purchase, right? So to release it partially would be, to me, meaning legal, if you could clarify, would to be grant a reduction, perhaps. <clears throat> I understand there'd be three properties, right? There's Fort Smith, a Corn and Still Stillwater, is that correct? Three properties. Three properties, okay. We I mean we must recover our cost at some Ma'am, what responsibility do I have paying whatever cost that this gentleman owes you? If you can't get your money out of him, how do I get my money out I, of him? I'm not a, here's the thing, I'm not a legal okay, representative. I can't enter that debate. That's for mm -hmm. I don't yeah. honestly don't want to be in this fight. I live three and a half hours away. I've been up here four times. Yeah. Commissioner Johnny Lee. Uh, Mr. Braun, you had come up here a minute ago. You said you don't think we should release the lien on the property? That's correct, sir. Okay, I want to make a motion to de uh, deny partial release of lien related to 257 Fort Smith Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32738. Let me. Can I ask Do we have a clarification? Sir, 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 we've got a motion on the table, please. Where I have a motion and a second. I have a motion by Commissioner Jody Lee and a second by Steve Colwell to not release the motion. Go ahead and speak. <clears throat> so your motion is to not grant the partial release or not to release the full lien. I want to be clear, <laughs> your lien on, on this other two properties that this guy owns, by all means, that's between you and the city of Deltona and, and this other guy, this, Mr. Brumagen. The, we never, I never, the magistrate never, Ron, the other people here in the city have never requested a full release or any kind of release. What I'm re requesting is that y'all allow me out of this fight has nothing to do with me and my family. And I've got a three month old son and two daughters at the house that I'm having to come up here every month and try to negotiate this. If anything, I write it off of my taxes, let it go back to the tax lien sale, they'll auction it off and you'll be in the same problem five, six years from now. You cannot sell this property with cross attaching liens. Nobody can buy it, nobody can sell it, nobody can do anything. Thank you, you're, sir. So you're hindering growth by just attaching this. If you want some money out of this deal, uh, $500 towards your admin cost. Thank you, sir. I'll cut the check today. Thank you, sir. Can we have public comment? Vice Mayor, there's one public comment. Brandy White, please. Mr. Sosa, did you want to have a comment? Yes. Brandy White, Deltona. Um, I was going to correct that there's actually three properties, so the equivalent would be fifty-four thousand six hundred and twenty cents, or uh, twenty dollars and ninety-one cents. Um, I understand what he's asking for, and and as a resident, I get it but also as a business person, that's part of doing business. And when you're familiar with buying properties, you know how important it is to do those searches and it may cost a little money or, or to triple check them. Um, so although my heart says 
release that one property because you still have the other two properties you can collect on, the fact is it was bought with those liens on it. And so you kind of have to follow the process with that. And so to be fair, I think splitting it by thirds, since there's three properties. So he's not on the hook for all of the stuff that he had nothing to do with, but it, it did become his problem when he purchased the property, unfortunately. Um, it's something that I look into and, and, and look at properties all the time, and, it, and you have to be super careful. Um, if he wants to take that 54000 and turn around and, like you, you mentioned, you know, go the civil route since it wasn't disclosed, that would be on him to do. But um, unfortunately, um, although the, that property incurred none of those um, it, it's still attached to the to the buyer that buys it, um, and and anybody who does investment properties knows this. So uh, I think that your fair thing to do would would split in thirds, not in two, because there's actually three properties. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. David, David Sosa. Lisa, David Sosa. Dave Sosa. This, this problem, uh, we had a similar situation, I believe it was last year, year before, where there was a house that was attached to a lien. The lien was on a house in Fort Smith. This house was somewhere else in Deltona. Um, I believe there, basically, there were some issues within the city manager, that individual, and they ended up releasing the property that that individual had purchased without any fees. And also, you do have a way to recoup your money from the individual that has assessed all these fines. I mean, last year, correct me if I'm wrong, Marsha, did we not have two properties or three properties that came before the commission to have their fines attached to their tax roll? So there is a way for you to recoup your money without involving this gentleman right here. You can take those, if he's up to $164,000, I mean, that's kind of ridiculous anyways, but then you do have a, re, a way to recoup your property or your money for the city of Deltona, and that's attaching liens on his tax roll. Not this gentleman's, but the one who actually assessed the problems. So we've set a precedent last year to where we can have this done. Now, granted, sir, you probably should have done your research on it. Mr. Sosa, Do, direct it to me. I please. think you should be responsible for 60000 Mr. Sosa, please no. direct it to me. I mean, th that, that's kind of ridiculous. You guys want him to pay more of a fine than what the property is even valued at. So, I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. Thank you. Mr. Bellick. The guy fell asleep at the wheel. Okay, so what do you want to do, bury him? You heard what he said? He's got kids home. He bought the piece of property, he got hoodwinked. So what do you want to do now, crucify him? <laughs> Come on. Every one of you has had problems with code enforcement probably at one time or another. You got to give the guy a break. He's a resident of Deltona, the one you put your hand on the Bible to protect and serve. Don't you remember that when you put your hand on the Bible? I ain't even going to ask you. Come on. Give the guy a break. Make a deal. He offered to write a check. How much did you offer to write the check? Mr. Bellick, please direct your questions to me. 500. He said he'd write a check for 500 tonight. Okay, so you want a little bit more? Barter with him. Make a deal. Come on. He's got a wife. He's got kids home. He bought a piece of property. He got stung. So now, what are you going to do? You're going to bury him? You're going to hang him? You're going to choke him? This is what you're there for, to serve the people. Serve him. Give him a break. He got stung. He didn't do his homework. So what do you want to do? Hang him? Come on. Give him a break. Wake up. Vice Mayor, this ends public comment. Can I say, address one more thing as far as numbers? No, we have a motion and a vote, sir. I need to take the vote. Oh, you run the board? Commissioner McCool, then Commissioner Vasquez. Uh, yeah, I do. Thank you. Uh, so... 
equitable distribution here is that the, the due diligence wasn't done by law. It's not meant to be punitive, but recuperative on this. I have all amount of sympathy for this being done, but at the same time, city has cost, true cost associated with this, and there needs to be, uh, in my opinion, an equal distribution of that. I don't know what the magistrate, I don't have clarity on what the magistrate meant by saying, let me have a partial reduction, I don't understand. <clears throat> I understand in the overall scope of the city, it's been hard for us to collect monies owed uh, yeah, we can put it on the tax roll for the rest of it or whatever, but I would like something to be worked out because um, it, it's a big chunk of change to swallow. I don't think that this man should bear it should bear a cost of $163,000, certainly when there's two other properties at stake here, and um, but there it has to be paid. The, the other taxpayers didn't buy this property, right? This was purchased privately. So I think that there has to be a consensus on what is a fair and equitable distribution between the three properties. I don't think it should I'll be pinned on this one purchaser. You know, it's unfortunate that that was done, but um, it's still buying the property, buying the the liabilities and the assets, as it were, for that property was done. And there's a reason why there's due diligence. So um, I just. <coughs> There needs to be a partial assessment, I believe, an equal distribution between the three properties, whatever that is, whether it's for the, you know, city cost or where it's for the total sum. I don't know. That's beyond my wisdom, but an equitable distribution for sure. Well, we have a motion and a second, and we'll see what happens with the first motion. Commissioner Villa Vasquez. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, again, like. <clears throat> Commissioner McCool said, I'm, I'm a little confused with the partial reduction from, I, I don't understand exactly what they were trying to say with that. Is it um, monetary wise or is it just to release the property? And my other question um, to, the, to our city attorney is, there's three, still three properties involved. You know, taking this one out, the yes. enforcement. There's three to, properties there's that three are still all together. There would be two left. So there's. Then we start. We have three right now. If this gentleman, if you took him out by reducing his responsibility, now now the the, the rest, whatever you leave, is on the two properties. And those two properties, are they're still on liens? There's liens and they're owned by the same individual, I believe, Danny, is that true? I yeah, just want to clarify, sir, yeah. okay? At one time, it was three properties. One of the property was sold, which is for Fort Smith to Mr. Williamson that is here. So there's two properties that are left. Um, but they're all, three of them are still got that cross-attached liens on there. And your question was for, it's actually a request for a partial release of a lien. That's the request that was submitted this evening. And, and if I could just, the special magistrate, uh, we, I worked with uh, Danny and Suzanne to try and give you all more detail on these agenda items. And, and when they went to the special magistrate, I don't think that she really had a lot of detail at that point. I know that Danny did talk to her, but you know, these are, we don't handle these that often, and then we got hit with two of them. So we were trying to do better in trying to get the commission the facts here. Mm -hmm. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, this individual could, in civil court, go after the guy who's you know, accumulated all of these, but you know, there would be funds for him to go into court if that guy so fraudulently sold him a part, piece of property without advising him that it was carrying huge liens. That was gonna be my next yeah. question. You know, can this, uh, the person who purchased this land now can go after the person who sold him for not, sure. um, he, I know, mean, there is a cause of action there, but of course, you know, going into court and pursuing that is expensive also. But by the same token, it's kind of like, well, well, you know, if he had checked, if he had done a title search, he would have found out and probably run away from this property. By the same token, he took that risk by not doing it. Now 
we have a situation where we have a guy, the original one who's accumulating, as Andy Ron told you, he's ready to put another lien on the property because we've had another episode of hoarding and having to remove stuff on the property. So this has been a continuing problem with that location and because he owned these other two parcels, you know, that those liens then were attached to all three. So yeah, it's a difficult situation, but by the same token, uh, the city is trying to be upfront with what kind of money we have invested in trying to deal with these properties and also the fact that the, the special magistrate didn't give you a recommendation of how you should split this. You could split it three ways. You could, I mean, you could come up with those kinds of things, but any of those kinds of splits are very, um, expensive because the fine's so large. And then also, yes, we do have that process we started last year. I don't know if this particular property would be uh, eligible for those non ad valorem assessments. It's something that we could look at for the future. And if that property is, you know, it fits the criteria, then we can put that property forward. But those properties, people were living in it. Yes, but in that one property, he is living there. Right, so, so I, mean, I just wanna make sure that, you know, I, we all here keep asking questions because we wanna make sure that we're making the right decision. I mean, we can all ask the same questions. Doesn't mean that we don't know what we're doing. We just wanna make sure that we're making the right decisions. Thank, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Jolie and Commissioner McCall, do you guys have a problem if I speak? No, go for it. Thank you. So if we look at page two of two on the back, it said ag agenda item A, um, it kind of breaks it down. So under 1197 Acorn Court, which is one of the liens, that totals $130,300 for improper parking, inoperable vehicles and trailers, no permit for accessory structures, too many vehicles, no permit for a fence, outdoor storage and debris. That is a true Deltona lien. Two, municipal liens owned by property 1197 Acorn Boulevard. Municipal liens are related to lot maintenance, abatement, the property of outdoor storage and debris of two separate occasions of outdoor storage and debris and removal of debris on two separate occasions. So right there we have over um, 138,000. Then we have special magistrate liens for property at 1203 Stillwater Avenue, Deltona. These are all Deltona water, Deltona properties. Um, and did I hear you correctly? You do not live in Deltona. You are an investor for Deltona. Um, 1203 Stillwater Avenue, Deltona is liens related to more than permitted allowed number of vehicles and or trailers parked on the property. Can we turn any of these three properties into the property appraiser and attach them to the tax roll with the new laws that were passed. We can for the property where the individual is living, but we'll have to run it through the process to see, but we can definitely put it on the list to check. And that we'll deal with, but again, you've got, we have a hoarder situation there. And the difficulty you have is this one is a big lien and trying like what we went through last year where you, you know, people have to be able to pay you know, pay it out, and you get, and and so it's something we can put on the list. But I don't know that it's necessarily applicable in this moment to what's going on here. Yeah, because I was going to suggest just recouping what Daltona actually has, and what Daltona actually has is one hundred and sixty-three thousand eight hundred sixty-two dollars and seventy-three cents in liens. Okay, got Commissioner Jody Lee. You know, I'm sorry this happened to you. I really am. I mean, it's it's bad that this all took place, but I'm sorry. It's It goes along the same thing. If you buy a car and it blows up, you're stuck. If you buy a horse and it dies, you're stuck. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, all these rules are put in place for this reason. When people don't take care of their properties, we put liens. That way we can recoup them somehow. If we start making deals, you can bet everybody's coming out of the woodwork. Our own director of code enforcement sitting right there advises not to release it. And we're skipping over what the director of code enforcement is telling us. I mean, we're gonna have everybody coming out of the woodwork asking for these things to be released. So when we keep releasing everybody for 100,000, 200,000, 
then we need to raise taxes again, then what? I mean, let's be real, This we got a lot of money invested in this. I feel bad, Bert, but this system's in place for this specific reason. All right, we have can a motion I, and a second. Can I speak? Madam, is he allowed to speak uh, or no? I'd like to straighten the numbers that were misquoted. Okay, our current offer on this property is $20,000 cash, not 54,000 or whatever that was said by this person. Okay, so, so divide 163,000 by three. It's over $50,000, 50, approximately $54,000. I'm selling the property for $20,000. I got over $18,000 in it and I haven't even paid closing cost. And it's my fourth trip up here to, to meet with this over this one little, the, the lot is about as big as a car, okay? It's about as big as this desk right here. And you're gonna penalize me and hold me up? I might as well just walk away and we can go back to tax lien sale, somebody else will buy it and it'll start all over again. I don't know what else to do to, to, to try to help y'all help yourselves. You got a buyer that lives in Deltona. I no longer wanna live in the city. I'm tired of coming here, honestly. You guys have bent me backwards. Thank you, sir. Let's call the vote. Um, Vice Mayor, before I cast this vote, uh, to a while ago, I got right. what the motion was. Could you read the motion, please? City Clerk, can you please read the motion made by Commissioner Jody Lee? I hereby move to deny partial release of lien related to 257 Fort Smith Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32738. Everybody vote. Dana? Commissioner McCall? Motion passes four to two. Commissioner McCool, did you want to speak again? I did, just for future references for our city and things like this. I understand that buyer beware rules first. It is not that I don't believe in what our city is doing and capturing these costs and trying to be fair, but I also believe an equitable distribution is at hand, so I wanted to explain you know, my vote for that. It's sad and it's unfortunate, um, but when a property is purchased, it must have due diligence, and so I wish you the best of luck, sir. I'm sorry that you've had a bad experience. Um, but we do what we do to protect our city also. I, and I'm sorry you had a bad experience. Can I donate it to the city of Deltona? Absolutely. <laughs> See the Madam I Clerk. I don't know what else I can do with this property because you guys are holding my hands to it. I can't pay 50 some thousand dollars in liens. I've already well, cleaned up the property. I understand, it, sir. You can see the Madam Clerk over there. Thank you very well, I've much. I've tried to contact the attorneys, the city attorney, several times, and I've gotten zero response from her or her staff. And I've been told from about seven different people that she's moved offices and locations in different firms. So who do I talk to? Mr. Chisholm, who would you like him to respond to? Who, who, do I, who do I contact about this? You contact me. I'm Jim Chisholm, city okay. manager. Contact my office. I will. Thank you. I'm gonna give you my card right now. Sure. Thank you, sir. Item B, <laughs> consideration for de reduction in the we'll fine. Take a, take a gander and talk Mr. To Chisholm, search your mic off for me. Consideration for a reduction in the fine of $75,100 assessed pursuant to special magistrate cases DEL 22060, DEL 22061, DEL 22062. Mr. Eric Spivey, real estate agent, is present as representing regarding 1299 Fountainhead Drive, Deltona, 32725. Danny Ron, co compliance manager, and Suzette Cameron, assistant to the city manager. This is Danny Rock, co compliance manager again. Um, on April 26, 2023, real estate agent Eric Spivey appeared before the special manager to request a reduction to reduce the fine. Uh, the special manager, uh, the special manager, Mrs. Ike, stated that she was in favor of reduction in this case. It did take time to come into compliance based, based on the difficulties of finding a contract to work and improve a structure that was already built based on the findings that the property is in full compliance now. The special magistrate made a recommendation to reduce the fine to $2,000 for each of the cases. And in this case, we have three different cases for no permits. Um, cost for the city is 
$1,920, and her recommendation is to reduce the fine to $6,000. I'm, I'm, um, I'm okay with either one. The property is in compliance at this date. Thank you. Commissioner McCool. Yes, I move to approve the reduction of the fine on all three cases to upon the recommendation of our code manager and the special magistrate in reference to case number DEL 22-060, comma, DEL 22-061 and DEL 22-601. Code compliance approves the recommendation for the reduction of the fine provided by the special magistrate, magistrate to the sum of $6,000 for all three cases. The owner requester, Vermont LLC real estate agent, Eric Spivey for the property located at 1299 Fountainhead Drive, Deltona, Florida, 32725. Fine to be paid from th within 30 days from today, May 22nd, 2023, or the fine will revert back to the original amount. We have a motion by Commissioner McCool and a second by Commissioner Burbank. Do you have any point of comments? No, Vice Mayor. No. Okay. Let's call the vote. Motion passes five to two. Commissioner McCool, you still want to speak? We have C, contract request for approval to expend no more than $40,000 in State of Florida Finance Cooperation ship funds for a disaster assistance project located at 1785 Tanner Court. Suzette Cameron, assistant to the city manager. Good evening, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. We're before you in reference to this distribution of 40,000 to assist this Deltona resident with a roof and two air conditioning systems for their home and it would come under our ship funds. And we'll entertain any questions and Angela Briggs is here as well. And your resident is here as well. Thank you, Ms. Suzette. Commissioner Jody Lee. Yes, Ms. Suzette, do we have any estimate on the, I'm gonna ask a couple basic questions. So the, the value of this property? The value is just a little over 700,000. The value of the house is 700,000? That is correct. And we're paying for an air conditioner system? Right, so when these funds are put into place, there's a criteria and a checklist, and the residents in this home currently do meet the criteria of the checklist. What's, what's the actual criteria for income level and stuff like that? Right, we look at income level, and um, Angelia is gonna help us a little bit with that. The criteria is normally income level, based on the number of persons in the household. That's set by uh, Florida Housing Finance in Tallahassee. Do you know how many people are in residence in this house? There are currently three persons living in the household. It's Mr. and Mrs. Duncan and their son. Do you know if there's any liens on this property? At this time, we did not locate any liens on this property. So $700,000 house, no liens on the property, is the house complete? Do you know there's a mortgage? Is it paid off? Uh, we were unable to locate a mortgage on the property. So else. there's no mortgage either. And they yes. want money from our city for the SHIP pro program to put an air conditioner on a house that's worth $700,000. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Commissioner Villavasquez. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I have a question on the uh, Num the years on the lien, I thought it was 15 years. On the hurricane, it's five. Hurricane disaster So it does funds. change for hurricane um, cases. During hurricanes, what we get is the will that people want to get the money out on the street and assist people as quickly as possible. What ends up happening is when there's a 15-year lien on a property, uh, most people say, mm, I don't want to do that, and we don't get residents coming in. We do get people coming to us within the city apparatus wanting us to get those funds out. This is a way that Florida Housing Finance has uh, Car, um, has corresponded with us to say, hey, you can lower the, lien, uh, the length of the lien. That might entice people to participate in the program. 
I just think five years is a little bit too low for us to put all this money into our home and then five years later it gets sold. That's my concern. I'm not, I'm not concerned about the other stuff because if they qualify, it doesn't matter how much the value of the house is because the values have gone up. I'm just a little concerned about the uh, number of the years. Staff Thank will you. take that in consideration and make the necessary uh, changes for the future. Commissioner Jody Lee. It, where, didn't we change the, the rules on us for a lien in the five or 10 year? Didn't we just change it for hurricane season? That's what we changed it to from 15 to five. That was the suggestion of Florida Housing Finance. When we went back and said, how long, how many years do you think we should do it for? Because there was a, you know, everyone wanted to get the funds out. Uh, we went back to them and they said, do it for five. It can be changed again. It will not impact this file. It won't impact it, but I, I Okay, I think we need to go back and change it again for us, but I understand it won't impact this, but that's all my questions. If the commission would like for us to change it, you can vote on that right now, I think. For the future. Not for this case, but for the future Not cases. for this case, we're gonna have to vote on this case as it is, correct. Uh, nobody else is on the board, I do have some questions. I mean, this, this kind of does raise feelers. When, when you change parameters for the hurricane, and obviously we did that for a specific reason because we had low income households that desperately needed to have the repairs in that, correct? Um, did we change the parameters on income, jobs, the time frame that you went back and you looked at verified income, assets, does, did any of that change? If I'm not mistaken, we don't change it in reference to income, because again, that comes from Florida Housing Finance directly. The number of uh, household members comes from Florida Housing Finance correctly. I am not sure, I don't think, but don't quote me on that, that we change the parameters for the length of time that we go back and look at their bank statements. We may have reduced that amount from six months to three months. Which is concerning to me because this happened six months ago and a lot of things have happened and some people may be temporarily without a income. Um, okay. Do we have a motion in a second? I want to make a motion. Or do we have, let me ask this, do we have any public comment? There's one public comment, Brandy White. Brandy White, Deltona. Uh, same thing, the five years caught my attention because that's extremely low. And I know that it says in here that the money doesn't have to be repaid as long as they stay in the house, but who checks to see if they decide to turn around and rent the house out and just don't report it? because a house that's four bedrooms and four baths can go for a pretty penny right now. So my concern would be the fact that there's roughly, let's just ballpark it on the low end, $300,000 in equity on this house. It was purchased for just under 400K. It's worth close to 800K now. So there's a whole lot of equity in the home. The home was purchased in 2013 at just nine years old. So obviously you would know that there's going to be roofs, ACs needed, the majority of things that all homeowners know they're gonna get to. And here it's 10 years later, you've been in the home and you haven't put any money or anything aside for your maintenance. And, and for a homeowner as myself, that's a problem. Um, <clears throat> My other concern was I didn't see the application attached and I'm sure for some privacy reasons that's why, but in the future some of this information that you're asking now would probably be good information to actually have attached, um, especially things like the equity, uh, things like that I, th I think should be pulled. Um, the five years I, I, that had to do with the hurricane, I, I would think that that means if the damages were hurricane related as well. I, I don't think the 19-year-old uh, ACs were from hurricane damage or the 19-year-old roof, possibly, maybe, but 
uh, again, I, these are, I think, all things that need to be looked at when we're approving these, because I'm hearing that, oh, nobody's using the program, we need to, but I get the opposite effect the last five years that I've looked into the SHIP program. It, there's like people wanting and, and not getting it or not being approved or, or um, they're, they're told the funding has already been exhausted for the year. So if we could get some clarification on is there leftover money every year and we need to kind of push the word out more? Because as a homeowner myself, I mean, looking at these guidelines, that's a pretty little deal. So um, that five years really gets me. That, that's, that's a hard one to swallow and I get it for the hurricane, but I think that means that it should have been damaged from the hurricane, not just a blanket of you know anything because in five years the house again you're going to resell it you've already got 300,000 plus in equity you're going to add now two new AC units which aren't cheap by the way and a roof what's that $40,000 so you know as we're sitting here waiting on budget season and and looking at, at what we need to do I think these are things we need to kind of crack down on and, and I agree that five, five years I had to triple I thought it was a, a, a mistype at first because when I remember the SHIP program, it was a good 15 years. So this was a little bit surprised if you see the five years. Thank you. Vice Mayor, this ends public comment. Commissioner Jody Lee. No. You know, I've looked into this property, I've looked into all this, and I'm just stating my opinion, not the city's opinion, my opinion. Somebody's gaming the system. And so at that, me looking into it for what I know, which I won't say it all right this minute, I want to make a motion to deny to expend to more than, no more than 40,000 of the state of Florida Finance Corporation ship funds for the project loaded at 18, sorry, 1785 Tanner Court. We got a motion to deny the funds. First by Commissioner Jody Lee, second by Commissioner Burbank. Anybody else want to speak? Let's call the vote. Uh, Commissioner Bill Vasquez. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So I know we have a roof project to, to replace roof uh, damages and stuff like that. Would it be possible to put this through without the air conditioners? Because I know we do have a help to repair roofs for the anybody who qualifies. They would have to make a different application. We could do the roof up under this disaster strategy if that's what you decided. Because we do have a uh, money to help residents of Deltona fix their roofs. That's, um, but that's under the um, owner-occupied repair strategy, right. and that's for 62 years and older. And that's for a very low, if I'm not mistaken, also, for it to be a free grant. And this person doesn't qualify for that? They're not 62 years and older. Okay. And they're not very low. Thank you. Thank you. Suzette, did you need to speak? I just wanted to remind you the residents here, would you like them to come up? Would you like to hear from the resident? No. Call the vote, please. Can we please repeat the motion? I hereby move to direct staff to deny. Oh, wait a I here move to direct staff to deny the disaster assistance for the dwelling located at the 1785 Tanner Court with an estimate of forty thousand dollars, utilizing Florida Housing Financial Corporation ship funds. So it's to deny it. Thank you. So the vote yes is to deny. Motion passes to deny six to zero. Comments on consent agenda? Consent agenda? 
Do you have any comments on consent agenda? No, Vice Mayor. Okay. Consent agenda A, request approval of bid number 23009 for the installation of five eighths by three quarter automated meter reading. Uh, water meters to Vanguard Utility Service in the amount of 547,550. Glenn Whitcomb, Public Works Director. Anybody have anything they want to pull on these? Request B, uh, request approval for the direct purchase of a permanent bypass pump from, I'm not going to say this, like Zucklum Dewatering Solutions utilizing the Florida Sheriff's Association contract FSA 20-EQU. 18.0 in the amount of $111,348.40, Glenn Whitcomb. Item C, request approval to award bid number 23010, nuisance abatements, lot mowing and property maintenance for code compliance division, Ronald Briggs, Bucket Man, LLC, Ferrell's Logistics, LLC, JBJ Operations, LLC, and One True Solutions, LLC, Danny Braun. Item D, approval of construction contractors for housing and community development grant program, Suzette Cameron. Item E. Request for approval, resolution number 2023-10, declaring certain tangible personal property owned by the city as surplus and authorizing the city manager or designee to dispose of them. Mary Leeson. Do we have a motion in a second or anything? I'll make a motion to approve uh, consent agenda A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, we have, we have second a with comment. Uh, Commissioner McCool, Commissioner Jody Lee, and Commissioner Villa Vasquez. Yeah, I, I second that with comment, and I just want to um, commend Glenn. Thank you for getting this going. This has been a long time coming, so I wanted to thank you for that. I also want to thank our assistant city manager and whoever else that we, it is good to see all of these names down here for these bidding out of these jobs and more people participating in the bid process for doing this for the city of Deltona. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank that you. Is it. Commissioner Johnny Lee. Well, I want, I had a couple of questions. I wanted to ask Ms. Wickham how we come up with what made him pick the one company over the other one on the water meter issue. And the other one is if we look at that number E, declaring certain tangible personal property owned by the city as surplus, I think we need to get a list of what's tangible property in the city before we just give them a blanket it's to get rid there, of it. Right? It's on there. Yeah, but I mean, we need, well, I think we need to look at it a little bit more. Yeah. If you look at your final auction May 5th, you'll see a list of items. And what was your, what was your other item you wanted to look at? I, I would like to look at some of the stuff that we're gonna get rid of and to maybe table that one for the next one. But I just would like to ask Mr. Whitcomb why he, what made him pick? I mean, I did my own investigation on these two companies and I was just asking what he made him pick the Vanguard. Both companies um, <clears throat> have a lot of experience installing these meters. We had broadcast the bid out to 1,666 companies. We received two bids and Vanguard was the lowest bid is the reason they were chosen. That was the only, that was it, just the lowest bid? Not, yes, sir. I mean, I, I know they both have good reputations and one of them, I believe one's out of New Jersey and the other one is out of Kentucky. Yes, they're not, they're not from Florida, that is correct. Doesn't one of them have a office in Daytona? I believe so, yes. And that was Vanguard, right? Yes. Okay, I was, well, that's what I'm chatting again. I wanna see if we can start. We made this up, brought this up before about people that could contract with the city. I'd like to make sure it's available to more people local than people. That right, and they're hiring local people to do the installations. And that's where I'm getting at. Yes, sir. And Thank we, when we went out to bid, um, we, put out in the bid to start with the initial 10,000, installation of 10,000. Um, obviously we have to go through our billing system. We have to get all the, the data transferred. We came before you a few weeks ago for the, for the uh, funds for Tyler Technologies, you know, to um, import that data, meter reading and et cetera. But um, we're gonna get started, Commissioner McCool, and uh, I'm happy to get going too. It, it's about time. Yeah, because you don't want her paying with pennies again. <laughs> Just.
I forgot about that. I, I'm glad. Thank you for answering that question. I, I already knew the answer I wanted. I just wanted to hear you say it too without me asking you for it. Commissioner Villa Vasquez. I think I made a motion. Did we get a second? Yeah, a second. Yeah. Okay, I didn't catch your second. So we have a first by Commissioner Villa Vasquez, second by Commissioner McCool. Nobody wants to speak on this item. Let's vote. Motion passes 6 0. City Commission special reports and requests. Commissioner McCool, Commissioner Burbank. Commissioner McCool first. Yes, one quick request is that I have broached this subject before and um, we do have people that uh, have mobility issues attending the meeting and I would like for us to think about giving up commission parking right here at the front of the building. Give that up to um, someone with lesser mobility. I understand it's a privilege to park up there for commissioners, but I've seen some people struggling to get up the hills or whatever and I think that we should designate that as handicap parking or think about that. Uh, and just, if you're able to park out in the parking lot, let's park out in the parking lot. I, I don't know. I don't know how anybody else feels about it, but it's, I would rather serve our residents than, you know, us park up there. That's all I have, thank you. Does anybody else object to that? Uh. Commissioner Cole, I'd like to give up the parking out here to veteran parking or, I'm um, sorry, a handicap? L yeah, limited mobility, yeah, handicap, whatever you want to say. I can we add it, can we make it handicap veteran parking? Um, so does anybody have a problem with Commissioner Burbank? Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's a great idea, but I think it's more than just restriping. I don't think we'd have to, we would probably, without looking at it, but offhand, we would probably have to construct a ramp, remove some curbing. It could be, um, <laughs> it's, it's a good idea, but it needs to be looked at, but I like the idea, thank so you. Fine, whatever, if it's cost conducive, but I just really think it gives the people, I've seen people struggling to get into the parking lot, our, our older people, so if we could just look at that and come back with feasibility, I'm you, fine with that. You've seen me walk across the parking lot, have <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> We Mr. Will. Chisholm, can you please look into that? Because I do know that there's not a ramp there. So if you could yeah. get back to us with the cost on that. Yeah, we'll, we'll check because there's num a number of things. Ramp is one. This, the elevation uh, may be a problem, but we'll take a look at it. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Burbank, you're on the board. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. I've raised the issue before. I'm going to raise it for the final time. We need to move our workshops upstairs. The mayor and I um, were at an EIEIO government conference or whatever it was last week, and we spoke of communications. And for this commission to become effective, we need to learn to work together. And to do that, we need to get to know each other a little better. And we're not, we can't do that. We cannot accomplish that by speaking into a microphone. We need to learn to talk to each other. I would recommend one more time and ask one more time, a final time, that we move these workshops upstairs where they serve as well for 20 years. Thank you. Okay, does anybody want to move that forward? I will tell you one of the concerns we have, the room upstairs, it will not fit in there. So the problem we had was capacity. So you do not have capacity in the room upstairs to host the meeting upstairs. So we have had before where they set the tables up down here and we did it in a way, I believe we did that during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we would just need to see what they need to do as far as the video and audio. I don't have a problem with it because I think that did work out well as far as the commission meetings go. Um, but as far as the room upstairs, I can tell you, I would say definitely no. It's, we would not, just this little group, we would not fit in that room. Um, so is anybody opposed to them looking at moving workshops to the floor in the chambers? Nope. I'm happy with that. Uh, Commissioner Villa Vasquez, do you have a comment? Yes, I think that um, what we used to have upstairs was agenda reviews. We did and for a short period stopped, had the meetings. We stopped that, uh, and that's when all commissioners sat together and went over our agenda. Uh, but workshops have always been down here. We did have them up there for a short period of time. And, but then it got too crowded where people were standing and sitting in the lobby. 
Um, Madam Vice Mayor, I'm happy down there just as long as we can get close to each other. I mean, I can't even see Steve down there hardly. Hi there, Steve. You're not missing much. No, just kidding. <laughs> Mr. Caldwell, do you have a problem with that? Mr. Jody Lee, Commissioner Jody Lee, Commissioner McCool, Commissioner Bill Vasquez. I don't have a problem with the request. I have a problem with. I have a problem when the residents start complaining that it's too crowded in there. Well, no, no, we're talking about having a meeting down here, setting the tables here, up on the floor. Oh, the, oh no, no, we're talking floor, about setting fine. the meeting up yeah, down fine. here. Okay. Can you guys see what it would take to set up the tables down here like we do for meetings? Okay, that would be for your workshops. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Commissioner Jody Lee? Yeah, I just want to know if we can get this, we need to get over, go on over through these comp plans and all this other stuff. We've been keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. People that live in the city keep talking about it. They keep complaining about it. And you know what we keep doing about it? Nothing. So can we get this done rather soon? It's talking work about the on comp plan. Work. Comp plan. Is your mic on? I must have ran out of time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Get our comp. Go through all this stuff. I mean, we keep hearing about it and hearing about it. We do. We, we all say we should go through it, and we don't do jack. So let's sit down and go through all these, and get it done and revised and redone, updated. Okay, Mr. Chisholm, are we already in the process of reviewing the comp plan? We were trying to get the contractor in, and we can't, haven't been able to get a response. At least I haven't seen one. Because I thought this was out for bed already. It's, it's already been out and in. We've awarded. The, I don't know where, what's happened to it. Yeah, so the contract was awarded. We are trying to schedule the kickoff meeting with the uh, consultant. So hopefully within the, between the, by the first week of June, by the first and second week of June, we will schedule that meeting. We'll have that scheduled. Does that answer everybody's question? So comp plan is in process and it is being awarded. Um, anything else? No. Commissioner Villa Vasquez? No request. No request. Um, Mr. Chisholm and Madam Attorney, while we're speaking about comp plan and moratorium, can you also, well, I can do this at the, at the end of the room, I think, but can we also update on the moratorium? So it was brought up again to do another moratorium. We are not allowed to do another moratorium for those individuals yeah, we that cannot. we can't just say, hey, we're going to do a moratorium and hey, we're going to do it for 12 months. Um, the moratorium is out to bid. They are, you know, have individuals. So I'm gonna let you guys update them on that, on where we stand on getting everything reviewed. I thought that we had already chosen a group that's working in, on everything. Is that along yeah. with the comp plan as well? Yes. Correct, okay, so that goes hand in hand with the comp plan that yes. uh, Mr. Wiz is working on. Yes. If you can just kind of help people understand how the two go together real quick. Yes, so absolutely. So with the contract that was awarded to Access Engineering, uh, they will be doing an, an evaluation and analysis essentially of our comprehensive plan, our land development code, as well as our infrastructure. Um, there are the year-based amendments, which um, by next year we'll have to um, send over to DEO whether we will be doing those or not, and then that gives us a year um, to be able to make those changes. So what we uh, are attempting to do is in tandem with that contract that that um, was initiated essentially by the moratorium is to have them look at all this holistically. And then um, there will be a kickoff meeting, there will be an analysis by them, and then we will have public workshops as well to discuss um, any changes that are recommended and that come out of um, that, that analysis by our, our consultant. Okay, thank you so much, because I, you know, we keep getting, one of the largest requests that we hear during public comments is they want an update on the comp plan, they want an update on the moratorium. Um, and I don't know what better way to update them and then is what you're doing now and then how we explain the process and how we're gonna have meetings scheduled. So I don't know, maybe that's one of your in one of your videos how we're gonna be discussing it, I don't know. Um, City Attorney, do you have any comments? No, ma'am. City Manager? No, ma'am. Let's see. Let's start with uh, Commissioner Col Caldwell. Commissioner Jody Lee. <laughs> <My turn. laughs> uh, 
couple things. I asked about a few months ago about making this house that we got into a animal shelter. I'm just wondering if we ever did anything. I know it's supposed to be under commissioner's comment or whatever requests, but there's a lot of stuff that I've been noticing around the city that uh, I'd, I'd like to see things, a little bit more things take place. Uh, there's some, a whole lot of new people in working for the city. Yeah, I wanna welcome y'all working for the city. I know Mr. Carl is over there and we've got some other people in the office. You know, I'm, I'm glad everybody in the city is doing what they're doing. We've had a lot of improvements with the building, uh, building department. Uh, the, I mean, every service in the city has been going good. I applaud y'all. And, you know, I want to thank you for getting that. Now that I'm off from vacation, I came home and see my grass there. It's awesome. It, it looks really great. I'm glad you took care of that. <laughs> Sorry, David. I had to. But, it, I mean, I'm just, I'm happy things are moving along the way they are coming. And I just hope we continue doing that. I hope we can keep going over some of these ordinances, like get the shed ordinance up there pretty soon so we can redo that or look at it and make changes to all this stuff. And I've seen your updated list of for permits and things to make it easier. I'm glad that's gonna make things, Joe, I appreciate it, because that's gonna be making so much easier. You guys working really hard. And I'm just happy things are starting to flow. There's a whole bunch of stuff that the public wants to see still. And I hope we actually start paying attention so we can get some of these things and reports out and we can get it taken care of to make them a little bit happier. It's nice when they're not coming up yelling at us, but everything else is, is going well pretty good. That's about all. Wow. Oh, Commissioner McCool. Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, there have been a couple of resident requests that I would like to see. Some of the, the most glaring is that I wish, I, I, I want the attorney contract put to bed. It needs to be put to bed. Um, it's been asked for, so if we could get that by next meeting, that would be fantastic. Um, I'm making it a formal request um, to have that done. So uh, there is that. <clears throat> Another thing that I talked about that I'll continue to talk about as far as um, briefly, our city growth and development plans. I'm asking you again to pay attention to everything that affects your level and your quality of life here in Deltona. We are coming up to budget talks and I, I pay attention. We have levels of service that we must maintain. Um, and what, what are those acceptable levels? What does Deltona think are acceptable levels? What do the residents think are acceptable levels? And these things need to be talked about. I've been beating the drum on the educational concurrency because it's abysmal the way that it reflects in the education of our children. We are literally approving development and we are taking children and we're putting them in shiny new schools without teachers to teach. They sit there in front of computers in the cafeteria, but yet, as residents, we continue to allow that from our school district and from our county. If you're interested in seeing that change, please write or call in your county council people and tell them they're the ones that have the power to change the interlocal agreement and demand better from your city representatives as far as that goes. These are your children. These are the ones that are going to be administering your Social Security, your quality of life, and what you're doing next in government. So we have that. We have lot levels of law enforcement services. Deltona. Are you happy with that? Are you happy with the traffic that is in Deltona? We have had an average of a wreck every day in the city of Deltona with more fatalities on our roads from distracted driving and traffic patterns than I have seen since I've lived here for 20 years. And there is a reason, because we're putting more stupid people together at the same time. I didn't call people in general stupid, so don't nail me for that. I'm talking about stupid, distracted driving patterns. I see it all the time. I want to buy a bullhorn and scream at people that are on their phones driving. Think about that. We need people to monitor that. We need deputies to traffic divisions to monitor that. What is your acceptable level of service on this? And I keep bringing it up because we keep having development come in front of us that's not paying for itself and not paying for the services that you deserve. So I want you to be cognizant. Wake up and demand better from your government. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Commissioner Villavasquez. Thank you, Vice Mayor. 
Um, I just want to remind everyone, if you haven't seen the uh, agenda, tomorrow there's going to be an affordable housing community meeting here at 10 o'clock in the morning, if you are interested in getting information on that. And I also want to give a big shout out and thank you to the, our um, PIO officer and her staff for putting the hurricane awareness event together in such a quick time and for contacting all the uh, guest speakers who came to speak. You did a great job, Catherine, and, and your staff as well. Um, I know there was, um, and the staff that attended, Danny and, and David? Correct, David. David, right. Um, thank you for, uh, for being there. You gave out great information. There's also, I think, flyers in the back or in the outside if you want to pick up anything up about the hurricane and you know the information that you need. Um, there was a question brought up about the Deltona magazine. That, Del that magazine does not belong to the city of Deltona. It's privately owned by another person. Her name is on there if you want to contact her. Um, unfortunately, it only gets dropped off on, uh, at businesses like Deltona and shops and stuff. If you want to put an ad in it, you have to call uh, Paloma, which is the owner, and it's uh, out of Sanford. So it does, it's called Deltona Magazine, but it's not, it does not belong to the city. It's privately owned, all right? And I just want to thank everyone for being here tonight. Thank you. And I also Go ahead. want to send out a prayer um, to Pat Northey. Mm. For those of you who didn't know, I mean, she put it on Facebook, so I guess we can mention it. Uh, she went through very serious uh, brain surgery. So let's keep her in our prayers. Thank you. Commissioner Burbank. Um, thank you, um, uh, Mrs. Bradford. Um, Glenn, I heard mention tonight of these things called speed signs. Are these the ones we put out temporarily They're on wheels to show you your speed limit and, and give you a warning. Uh, I was driving around DeBerry the other day and I happen to notice they have some that are permanently mounted. We hear a lot about speeding. Is there any way that we could maybe put a few more of those up some places where we have more complaints? Or is there a reason we're not doing so? You don't have to answer that now. Just I'm just planting the seed. Thank you. Uh, then the uh, second item on my list is the a heartfelt thank you to our city manager for giving uh, Mr. Ruiz the job as a full-time planning director. We no longer have interim. We no longer have acting. We have a real guy. He's sharp, and he's up and coming, and most pleasing to me is he lives here in Deltona. We haven't had one of them in a long time. Department heads need to live here. They're invested in here. I think he's going to be a good job. And Joe, pay attention to this man. He's pretty sharp. Um, and then the last thing, and it has nothing to do with the agenda, nothing to do with anything else, but we were talking about Tanner Court, this is historical significance. That area is where once upon a time back in the 1840s, 50s, 60s, and after the Civil War was where the free slave community of Garfield was located. Uh, back in the 60s, I actually went out with the metal detector. We found pieces of that old town. They had their own railroad station, they had their own store, they had their own church, and they were closely affiliated with the, most of them actually worked at the old Brock House Hotel and Enterprise back in the 1860s, 70s, 80s. Uh, and so that, oh, and that also is the place of my one and only arrest. Well, we won't talk about that. Thank you so much for your time, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I do have a few items. Um, I'm going to bring this up, and it's the Flowmobile, because I've talked to many people, and they say, what is the Flowmobile? I don't understand. What do you mean you're going to go to City Hall and get your driver's license? You can't do that, Anita. You can't do that. So the Flowmobile goes around to different areas and visits. It visits City Hall. He's actually going to be visiting City Hall tomorrow, to be fact, from 10 to 2. And you can do your first time license, convert your out of state license, renewals for class E, replacement for lost or stolen license, address name chains, ID cards, reinstatement, emergency contact information, vehicle registration, disabled parking place card. So there's many items you can do. And if you've never done this before, it is quick, it's easy, and you literally just walk in and walk out. You know, and I recommend if this is something you need to do, they'll be here tomorrow from 10 to 2, definitely recommend it. I, I wanna thank and commend staff. There are a lot of new faces. 
you know, and I will say, I don't go on Facebook too often, but I've went on a few times and I've seen these awesome little videos that's been done, Mr. Chisholm and your staff, and I personally love to see the staff getting on there and the updates and, you know, I love seeing what's going on. And I hope that we can continue to do that because it's, it's a great way to communicate with the residents. And I just want to tell you, thank you very much, you and staff. I know staff probably is like, but I want you guys to know we love it. It's awesome. And y'all you, look amazing on camera. So, you know, y'all y'all lose 20 pounds on camera. So it does. And, it, and it's very enlightening and helpful for the residents. So I just want to tell you guys, thank you for taking that extra step and going the extra mile to let the residents know what's going on in the neighborhood. With that, we're adjourned.